Hi everyone, today we're going to be talking about a piece of technology that can absolutely revolutionize your trade. Something as crazy as this that you can trigger from anything. Bit alerts, sub redemptions, channel point redemptions, raids, and whatnot. You can do so much with this tool I'm about to show you. And guess what? It's absolutely free. Super easy to use, pretty much replaces your stream deck, and I, I just don't see any why, reason why you wouldn't want to use this on stream. Let's talk about Lorien Board, its impact, and how to set it up. That's right, guys. We're talking about Lorien Board. This little guy right here, absolutely free. You can set it up on your phone, on your PC. It's going to get green screened out a little bit there. Sorry. Let me see. There we go. So... My, my camera likes to, to focus on different things on there. But this, this little piece of technology has been doing whatever I think that I've wanted to do on stream at one set. It's going to replace pretty much everything. Today we're going to be talking about how to set it up, how to get rolling, and just how to have fun with it. It's, I can't stress it enough, amazing. Let's go straight into the video and have some fun. <laughs> If you guys have first time to the channel, this is where we talk about everything that we can do to make our streams and our lives and our content as amazing as it possibly can be. I am the Argon Mock. I stream quite often on Twitch. Go down there, hit the link, follow me, and I'll show you everything we need to know over time to get your stream looking as amazing as it possibly can. That said, today we're going to be talking about Lorian Board. It's actually quite a mouthful, and I want to have a lot of stuff to cover. So I'm going to go straight into the content and show you as much as I possibly can, okay? All right, so this is pretty much my stream PC. Uh, well, the first thing you're going to need to get set up on Lorian Board is basically OBS WebSocket. If you haven't gotten OBS WebSocket before, um, I've talked about it a couple of times on different, different subjects, but this is what one of the first pieces of things that you're going to need. It's pretty self-explanatory. I'll put the download and the links down below, below the, the, the video here so you can get straight to it. You just go to download, run it. It installs pretty easy. If you do have a weirdness installing an OBS plugin here, you can always, always, always uh, install your, your plugins manually just by going into your PC where OBS is located. Um, for me, it's program files, OBS. And then here we have OBS plugins. If you go right here um, and you download the zip of the WebSocket, you could just take the entire plugin package and override this folder, and you should get your OBS Web plugin, plugin installed. You'll know it's installed correctly. Uh, you might have to restart OBS, maybe your computer, depending on your situation. And then underneath Tools and WebSocket server settings, if you see this show up, your WebSocket should be installed correctly. So that's the first thing to know. The other thing you're gonna to need to go down and download is Lorian Board itself, which is also gonna be included in our list of links down below of the video. This one comes in a zip folder. This, you just go ahead and hit the download. You'll get a zip package. And pretty much all you need to do is extract it wherever you want it and extract it at. It can run from anywhere on its own. It's got quite a few cool tools in it, which we're gonna go over. All right, the first thing you'll need to know is where you popped your, ex your extract at. So for me, I extracted a folder over here. That extracted folder has the extensions, which we're not going to cover today. There's more coming and more have already came to this, this platform as far as functionality goes. We're just going to cover the install and some basics. We have a receiver PC, an Android, um, and a PC deck. And so... These ones I'll cover in a second, but the first thing we need to do is open up our PC uh, Lorian Board Receiver. So go ahead and go in there, and you'll see this Lorian Board Receiver. Go ahead and double-click that boy. Um, I already have mine running. It's in the background. It looks something like this. All right. A couple things will happen once you um, double-click and open this guy up, uh, potentially. So the first thing that might happen is you might get a Windows prompt security alert that says, hey, there's a program that wants to gain access to your network. Do you want to allow access? That's a good thing. Go ahead and click allow access, and that lets Lorian Board Receiver do its magic and talk to all the components that it needs to talk to. Um, if it closes right away, that's your antivirus kicking in and basically saying that this is malicious and it doesn't want it to run, um, which uh, happened to me, actually. In order to actually fix that, um, if you go into your... Um, 
Lorian board receiver PC, you have all these files in here, config, connect, all this other stuff. I already deleted it and I'm actually already running this, so I'm not reinstalling it because I'm using it. But you'll see another file that says GM file DLL. I'll put some text up so you know what we're talking about. Um, what worked for me is I just deleted that file and I was able to run it just no problem at all. And it came up with the Polaroid board. Uh, these ones will start off black um, and not gray. I'm already connected, that's why. First thing we need to do is connect to OBS, that's the WebSocket. So first thing you'll need to do is go into your OBS Studio underneath Tools, that WebSocket server settings, click on that. You'll have basically a port. It should stay at 4444. Um, you can change the port if you really wanted to. I just kept it default. Um, and if you want, you can leave a password. Keep note of these numbers here because that's what we need to actually get it connected. So if you're in Lorian board, Go underneath options and then that WebSocket 44444 should still be there. If you made that password, that's where you're going to drop it right there. And listing port, we come across a little bit later when we actually open up the Stream Deck itself. Um, I just kept the default at 9423. Um, I have Auto Connect turned on. Um, it's up to you uh, whether or not you want it. And I just set frames to 60 because it made sense to me. Um, and actually after that, you hit accept, accept and you should be good and set up on that. Um, the next one we need to do is link to your Twitch. So if you just click on that, you're going to get an open URL. This is basically authenticating the program to work with your Twitch account. So if you open URL, you're going to get um, um, a nice little web page that opens up. It's already authenticated for me, but you're going to get an authentication uh, message. So you have to log in with your Twitch username and password and authenticate. So it can be used with Twitch. Um, mine's already authenticated and every two months, um, or so you'll have to re-authenticate. Um, so I'm just gonna close that. And then afterwards you should get a gray on there, which will be great, you're linked to Twitch. The other one you'll need to do is connect to Twitch. This one's a little bit more complicated, so I'll show you kind of how to do it. Um, basically you need to put a browser source in OBS. So here in OBS, I'm just gonna put one in right here. We're gonna go under resources, I'll hit plus. We're gonna do a new browser source. Um, I'm going to just call it TSL and hit OK. Um, it should show up at the top right there. So we have, uh, we need to browse for a local file. So check local file, hit browse. You need to go into where you unzipped your Lorian boards. In that first folder there, you'll see one that says TSL transmitter. It's a, an, um, an HTML document. Hit open. Doesn't matter at what size. You can do eight by six, it really doesn't matter. Um, and anything else is just, it doesn't matter at all. So just hit okay. And then you can even just hide the source if you want. You only need one of this browser source in one of your scenes somewhere. Um, and we actually have more than one browser source. Uh, like I just made my second one, it will actually glitch the program. But you need to have this browser source somewhere in OBS for it to communicate and connect to Twitch. Um, so I'm just going to highlight it and minus delete it real fast because I have another one in another scene already. Uh, but you need to have that in there for this thing to work. Um, and then when you go underneath Lorian board and you hit connect to Twitch, you should turn gray. Okay, so you're already halfway there. Um, so what Lorian board is is a collection of stream decks, and he already went through there and made a bunch of stream decks for us. Um, I'm also going to uh, leave his link as far as tutorial stuff goes down. He might explain things a little bit better than I, if that works for you. There's a README that's inside the folder too, but if you just follow step by step, you should be able to get right on. So these are just examples of different stream decks. So if we go into like meme sounds, for example, um, this is where you would actually edit and make your own stream deck as far as uh, what buttons you want to use. So he has uh, some meme stuff in here. Um, they're all sounds and stuff like that, uh, which is cool. You can change the width and the, the, the size, so you can add more buttons, and you can even add buttons that cycle between different stream decks, which is what he did. So this is how you edit and make a stream deck. Um, I have one myself, and you can see these corresponding numbers. That's the deck number. So when we open up our stream deck, it will say, hey, what deck do you want to open? Um, and we'll, we'll be able to open these, these different decks, okay? So um, I'm going to show you what it looks like on my stream deck. This is kind of that one I was showing you before. Um, this is uh, currently still getting updated, lots of functionality, um, but 
you can see that I've made all these custom buttons. You can change the name, change the color. You can even add like a sprite image to make it easier to see um, and even adding commands and stuff. So in order to open that Stream Deck, um, there's one more um, program in there. I'm actually gonna take my Stream Deck itself. This is what it looks like. I'm gonna close it so I can reopen it for you. So back in the Lorian board, you saw the all the other folders in there. We have the Stream Deck Android. I'll cover that one in a moment. And the Stream Deck PC. We're going to dial into that one. And then we're going to go ahead and double click the Lorian board Stream Deck. It's loading. All right. So it's asked what IP address it is. This is the a local IP address of your streaming PC, the one that's running OBS. If you don't know what your stream of PC um, address is, he was nice enough to include a bat uh, folder for you, a bat command. So right here underneath the Lorian board installation, there's a what's my local IP. If you double click that, it's just gonna run a quick command prompt and it's gonna find your IP address. The one you need is your IP4 address. This is your local IP address for your stream PC. Um, remember those numbers. If you don't know what your IP is, that should basically be that IP. Remember that last the listening port as well under options as 9423. Uh, um, you need to have that same port for you. And then this is what deck you want to open as your starting deck. Okay, so I'm going to open up six. That's my own little start, uh, deck that I made. And it should uh, connect and open right up. And now we have our stream deck. And if I press um, some of these cool little buttons, uh, then you should see uh, things moving around and opening up and stuff like that. So this is all pre-programmed for me, but I'll show you how to open this on your, also your phone. So let me close this guy real fast and then we'll close this guy real fast and we'll go back into the files itself. So under here, uh, you'll have another one that says Stream Deck Android. As far as I know, it only works with Android. So you're gonna open that up. You have an APK file. Go ahead and right click and hit copy and you'll need to take your, your phone, um, unlock it and then connect it via USB to your computer and then you need to copy this package in on your phone somewhere. Drop it somewhere. Remember where you installed it at. Um, if you don't know how to run an APK file or you can't find it on your phone, um, I would recommend getting Astro File Manager. You can just get that um, from like the Google Play Store. It's free as well. And then that will basically let you navigate through your phone and open files. So what you need to do is find this APK file right here. It's basically an installation package and run it and that will run on your phone um, the, the same thing that we just saw as we were logging into the Stream Deck. So on my phone, I'm gonna close it real fast and it will show up kind of because of the green screen. Let me make this guy a little bit bigger for us here. Sorry, I'm, I'm loading. All right, so I uh, took a second there because I realized I closed the Lorian board receiver. Your receiver still needs to be open on the PC for this to work. And this is going to show up a little weird from the green screen side of things because what we have here is um, that same login screen. My green chroma key is killing it right now, but it's asking for my IP, my port, um, and what deck that I want to open. Exactly the same thing that I had on my PC side of the stream deck. And then as long as your information is correct and green green screen is going to Chrome or key that out, you'll see that it's going to load up the same exact thing. And then if I move over to like the stream PC via button, it will move my entire thing over for me. Pretty, pretty rad, right? So um, that's how it works on the phone side of things. I'm going to show you as well some functionalities for making some buttons because I wanted to show you some basic stuff. We're not going to get into advanced. Advanced is going to come in probably another video at sorts because the possibilities are just endless with this guy. Uh, so we're going to go into my stream deck, um, make a couple buttons. So I'm going to go underneath channel point triggers. And then here's I have a little bit of an open space. I'm going to right click to create a new button. Um, if you need more space, you can always change the size up here. You can change the color, whatever you want to do. I'm just going to leave it gray. I'm going to change this. I'm going to make this like my chat screen. So I'm just going to type it in as chat so I know what it is. Um, we're going to make a scene switcher. Um, so if you right click and go into commands, hit plus for a new command. Um, the first one already shows up as scene switch, but if you need to change your commands, you can click on there. And this is all the millions of actual commands and triggers that you can make. Um, he was also nice enough in the installation 
to make another HTML document that just says commands. So if you need to actually like figure out what does what, reading through this will show you everything you need to know, okay? So like, for example, scene switches on here, um, changing text visibility, all of the things, you read through that, and then it will, you'll, you'll, you'll absorb as much as you possibly can. Now, I'm still going through a lot of that as well, and I'm learning, and that's one reason why it took me a little while to get this video out, but the reality is the possibilities are just insane. So anyways, we have a scene switch button. What scene do we need to change it to? You just click in that field and then change it to whatever scene you want. I'll do uh, uh, record mode. I'll do my chat. I'll do chatting too. No, I'll just do chatting. Okay, I have lots of things in there. And then this little delay in MS is um, how fast do you want this to happen. The cool thing about this program is you can stack commands in a delay format. So if you want things to like trigger in sequence, you can do so. Um, for us, we're going to want to have it instantly, so I'll hit done. And now you have to hit done one more time for this to update. And then we're going to open back up our, I'll just do this onto the PC deck. Uh, we need to open up the stream deck so you can kind of see this happening. And then I'll reconnect to the stream deck six because that's what we needed. And then that chat button will show up. So I'm just going to click it and you'll see it switch scenes on us. All right, so this is like, my chatting screen for for the moment <laughs> i'm still moving things around and such and then on you won't see it but i'm going to go back and just move it back to my stream pc um so i'm using the same buttons in there to to move it around so we're back on our stream pc hello we're back a lot of things that are open up in here and i'm going to show you a couple more functionalities while we're here so i'm going to just minimize that guy we're going to go back into my, my deck we're going to make another button i want to show you um asset creation so we're just gonna make another fat button somewhere, whatever. And then I'm gonna right click it. Um, I'm going to change the text as DAB, D-A-B. Um, I made basically a little graphic that will show up if I hit this button. Um, and then I'll add commands. We're gonna plus here. Basically what I have, and this is an OBS, I have this little asset of a minion jumping across the screen. So if I toggle it on, he'll jump. Whee! Okay, just a quick little two second jump. And if, I, if you wanna toggle it back off, because it won't loop, you need it. It's the way OBS has, it works. It's like an off-on situation, so it doesn't know what the end of the animation is. So basically, you have to trigger it again, and then as soon as it triggers, it will do it. So I want to make this asset um, toggle with this button is what I'm trying to do. So in the board itself, we need to um, find a different command. We're actually going to use a source. You can use a toggle. I like to do off-on um, or on-off. So change visibility is what we're looking for, source change visibility. Um, the, the scene name, so this will toggle things if you want it in different scenes. Um, it doesn't matter for me, so I'm just gonna use it in this scene. It, if you leave it blank, it will toggle it if it's um, available. And then we just need to, you can actually type it in, D-A-B, whatever you labeled it as, and I have that dab um, little movie that's gonna play. I'm change the visibility to true, that's gonna turn it on and delay is zero, so turn it on instantly. Um, then I'm gonna to toggle another command by hitting this plus, and then I'm gonna do another change visibility. Again, we're gonna find that dab um, little asset, and then we're gonna turn it off, and then here with that delay, I can say um, two seconds or so, and I think that should work as far as time goes. Um, so it will turn it on instantly, and then we'll wait if you do 2,000 milliseconds, that's two seconds. It will wait two seconds and then turn it back off. All right, and I'm gonna hit done. And I'm gonna hit done again. And then if we go back into the uh, Lorian board stream deck, you'll see that the dab button sh showed up. So when I click it, um, it he should jump across the screen. Woo, there he goes. Um, and that's pretty damn cool, right? Well, that's the basics of it. Um, there's a lot more you can do with it, but uh, that's, what a stream deck can kind of do for you in general, right? Well, here we have a Lorian board that takes it to the next step. There's multiple ways to trigger this animation. So I'm gonna show you one little more nugget before I go, and that's stream triggers. So I'm gonna go back into Lorian board again. I'm gonna go to channel point triggers. So when we're back into our board, I'm gonna right click that same um, dab thing. And then you can see all the commands and such that you can do. What I want to do is add a Twitch trigger. So I'm gonna click on Twitch trigger. Um, 
you can add request queue that's going to put things in sequence for you i really I'm not going to do it right now because I'm, I'm not really worried about it but i'm going to do plus and you can see everything that we were talking about that makes lorian board amazing so you can do things like bits like um, if you want it only to trigger when there's 500 a, a, a donation of 500 bits there you go 500 minimum 500 maximum you can change the ceiling you can do whatever you want with it there's subs so you have prime subs tier one tier two tier three i've been looking for a way to distinguish between alerts that say hey this is a difference between a tier one and a tier three like somebody who does a tier three this alert will trigger as opposed to that a trigger and this has it built in which is just absolutely amazing um, so i'm going to go down to there's point redeems that's what we're going to do right here there's also chat messages so like if you want a mod to say exclamation mark dab only the mods can do it you can do that host rates like i mean the, the possibilities i'm telling you are just insane so we're going to go point redeems this is what's called channel points which is really amazing and then we need to give it a name and i'm just going to say capital d a b remember this name the spelling is important hit done and you can see that it gets a little it's hard to see but a little twitch icon and that lets it know that it's connected to twitch and it's some form or fashion and it's ready to do its little trigger so the next step for us to make this work is we need to um hit done and that will update it and i'm going to minimize this guy and then we're going to go into twitch itself um i have logged in underneath twitch and uh if you go underneath your dashboard into your stream manager. There's a spot up here where the arrows are. You should be able to go into community. And then underneath community, there's there's channel points. So we're gonna go underneath channel points. We're gonna manage our rewards. And this is all of our channel point rewards. I already created one because I was kind of testing it, but I'm just gonna delete it. We're gonna create a, um, a, new, a new one for us so you can see it work. We're gonna do add a custom reward. We'll call it dab. Again, spelling is important. And then what's description, minion, visual effect or something. Um, requiring to enter text, I'm not going to require them. How much do you want it to cost? We'll just say 100, seems, well, 50. Seems like a pretty low, um, quick little visual anyways. Okay, and then requ uh, skip request record again. That's fine, I'll, I'll, and then I'll just create that. Um, now if you go back into your channel, uh, click up right there, go into your channel. As the owner of your channel, you actually have infinite channel points. So you can test this right here and here. A little advertisement's popping up, so I'm just gonna mute that. And then down here where your normal chat would be for your, your viewers, you get these um, channel points here. And there's that dab that we just made. Well, I'm, I'm gonna try to do this by making OBS a little bit smaller so you can see it work. So we do have the um the boring board still running in the background you have to have it running in the background and my stream deck is up um which is uh, i don't think it's actually necessary but i can have that up like on my other screen or you can have it up on your phone or whatever and as soon as i redeem this i'll go ahead and click it and click one more time to redeem you should see him do his little 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 dab jump so I, <laughs> something like that i don't know if that makes sense or whatnot but eh, looks like it's going to be fun so anyways there's a million things you can do. Like I said, we're going to be doing a little bit more advanced videos as we go forward. So make sure you're subscribing to this channel because more information is coming. And if you liked it, hit a like, comment if you have questions. Um, if you haven't done so already, like I was saying, follow me on Twitch. If you see me live and you have questions about setup, feel free to ask. And worst case scenario, you can just game with me. It's gonna be fun. Beyond that, I think that's going to conclude our video, and I'll see you next time, Home Glitches. Be safe out there. We got more information coming. I'll see you next time.